Okay, so we will get started here. Uh, welcome to the Buffalo Chasers podcast. It is December 2nd, 2022. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, Joe McGeeshek and uh, Mr. Tommy Christian are both in the house. Uh, and so for today, we wanted to uh, uh, talk about a few different things. Uh, we always try to cover uh, topics of mental health for our, our viewers out there that like to listen to this content. I always get a lot of good positive feedback wherever we go. And so uh, before we, um, I guess, get moving along with our discussion here, uh, Dexy, Tommy, is it, could you share a prayer with us or some good oh. words, and then we'll get started. Oh, I'll make Dr. Epidaya and Hippie, Ushimala, Chewy Chasha Mialo, Ambe Tukile, Nahoma, Kiana, Havu, Chikia, Kixiapo, Nitaki, Epiwayaza, Pina, Chante Yoksi, Jomani, Opia, Chawa, Ushi, which Alapo. So help me out, my relatives, and again, good morning to everybody, and hopefully we'll have a good podcast here this after, this this morning, uh, and a lot of good uh, reflection, a lot of good uh, understanding. Uh, Joe was my brother-in-law for many, many years, and, and again, we have a lot of good stuff in common, and of course, we'll we'll discuss it as we go along, but right now, we'll start off with a, in a good way, with a wu uh, a heartfelt cry for the sake of others, and that's the kind of how we believe and, and understanding this importance of uh, humbling ourselves to this higher power. Chanku,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母,我们的父母
for the college, just, you know, for all the high schools, you know, they should, I would think that uh, if I was a high school, back when I was a high school teacher years ago, if I was a high school teacher now, I mean, these are just great teaching tools, you know, rather than to just pop in <laughs> Little Big Man or uh, Soldier Blue or what the teachers used to do to us when we were in Native American studies classes or any other classes. So I'm, I'm really, really honored to be here and to uh, share what I can, a uh, little that I know. I'm a lifelong student. That's my philosophy, basic philosophy, mm -hmm. is uh, the, the, the more I know is the more I realize that, you know, I really don't know very much, but I'm, I'm really happy to, to be a lifelong student and, and to learn as much as I can. And uh, people like Tommy and Elijah, you know, it doesn't matter if, uh, if someone's uh, elderly or someone's middle-aged or even a little child, you learn from everybody. Um, you know, we can't be uh, the type of people where uh, we think we're the old cliche, Mr. Know-it-all, you know, um, there's no such thing as that. Um, we have to help each other. And I just wanted to say something personally. I just came out, came over a, uh, um, about uh, now in about my fifth month, a severe spinal injury and uh, uh, just over time it deteriorated it uh, uh, my thoracic was pinching pinching my spinal cord and the very serious uh, operation it was a five hour operation I had a two hour MRI I actually thought I was going to die I really did yeah. um, and there were times I even didn't want to live unfortunately however you know I had tons of support and that's the only way I made it not by myself. I couldn't have made it by myself. There's no way. I had great neurosurgeon, great doctor. I have a great physical therapist right now. Right now, I'm sitting in a kind of a walker chair that I get around with, and I'm really learning learning myself to walk over again. Very difficult. You know, I used to take a lot of things for granted. Even though I thought I was a, a secure person, uh, you know, uh, grounded in things, I found out how weak I was during that time, and that I needed help. I needed my relatives, both living and on the other side. Oh. And they all helped me. And prayer was a good thing. There yeah. was a time that my life, I stopped even almost believing in prayer, thinking that yeah. it wasn't any good. But I was wrong. You know, I failed that again. Mm -hmm. And I said before, you know, another philosophy of my life is I failed many, many more times than I've succeeded. And yes, I've had success. I've wrote a couple of books. I've been a teacher, an educator, um, have a great family. Um, I'm a Cinnaboyne Sioux in Chippewa from Fort Peck. I grew up yeah. there. Um, great people, great life. I grew up poor, just like you guys did. But yeah. you know what? I didn't know I was poor. I thought I was rich, man. I had a big family. I had uh, um, a lot of friends, you know, great friends on the south side of Wolf Point and still lifelong friends to this day, both Indian and white. You know, yeah, yeah, both yeah. Indian and white, really good friends. I have really good friends, you know, that are white people. I have really great friends that are, that are <clears throat> people um, and relatives, too, because we've intermarried. I married a white woman, you know, a white lady. And we have two great children, uh, Dr. Cole McGeeshick and Mackenzie Welsh, who's a teacher over in Bozeman. So proud yeah. of those people. And, you know, when I was, you know, almost literally, I think, even though I was, I guess, far from it when I look back on this time. Um, I was literally on my deathbed thinking that I was going to die. But the only thing, you know, one of the only things that kept me going, you know, was the support and was my children. Because, yeah. you know, if you, you can believe in God and Jesus, you can believe in the Kanshala and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, you know uh, every, you know, God, the creator, you can believe in whatever you want, Buddha, whatever. But you know what is tangible and true? Your relatives. You can yeah. believe in your relatives. You can count on them. They are there. They'll talk to you. They'll support you. So don't give up on your relatives. I know a lot of people have, and and there's and I have too. I mean, I'm guilty of that. I'm not perfect, and I yeah. need to go. You know, to go. You know, to bond some some some. Uh, relationships with that and, and that's my mm -hmm. fault um, you know joey um one of the things that uh, i find it interesting you're a product of your environment and you exactly. just stated your environment uh wolf point montana and all those relationships you had throughout your lifetime 
which uh, became a support system for you, especially at crucial times like your back surgery and whatnot. But more importantly, you could consider them family. And that's what we're trying to do is help our people understand the importance of that family orientation, that family bond that we have. Not, not, not in the Indian way, it's like a, a lot of your non-Indian relatives have became your relatives, but you know, because the way you think, the way you, 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 your relationship consists of them. And one of the key things to that whole thing, that's why it's so interesting that you stated that this IT perspective uh, uh, is important because you, you have three doctors in your life, Dr. Florence Garcia, yourself, and of course, Dr. Cole McKenzie, not Cole McKenzie, Cole, <laughs> Cole Gravy. Uh, they're, they're all doctors, eh? And so education is key and important, but you never could have made it without, or, and any of them, uh, yeah. Florence yeah. or Oracle, yeah. never could have made it without the support of their family. And that's kind of what we're trying to help people understand is, is get, get rid of that, those barriers that have held us back for whatever reason, eh? Uh, we were talking earlier about the, 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 the spirituality of your mother. Uh, for those that didn't know Joyce, they, they lost out because uh, she was a very true, sincere, uh, re religious, uh, spiritual. Lady. Catholic. Oh, man. And, and again, those sorts of things, that's your base and your foundation that brought you to this understanding. But at the same time, Joey, remember, you, you were the head cook at the big lodge, the Tibi Tonga, and, and you did that for years. And, and it's amazing how that educational process and a contemporary form of thinking brought you to a very humble uh, uh, understanding of who and what you were, not only as an Assiniboine, but also as a Nishinaabe, because you're also from Mole and yeah. your relatives, yeah. you know, they lived that life. They were, they were rice gatherers. They, they were hunters. They, they were Still fishermen. Are, yeah. And they taught you that. You remember how you guys used to, Oh, your uncles just come over and help you out and they'd go hunting and they'd have that excursion every year. But all of that thing, what I'm addressing is the importance of that support system, the family, you see? So, yeah. so again, it, it's, it's important for us to understand uh, to be a critical thinker is key and first and foremost, but to understand that support system and accept it and acknowledge it is, is what we're trying to, to get across. Would you agree with that, Dr. Joe? I agree with that 100%, Tommy. And it also is a reflection here uh, with Elijah and the Buffalo Chasers and FPCC, you know, that family, the Buffalo Chasers. Yeah. Family. I'm a part mm -hmm. of that as well. I teach at FPCC. Yeah. I teach online classes here from Billings. You know, sometimes I have uh, in a semester, I'll have 80, 90 students, you know, probably mm -hmm. one third of the FPCC student body. And sometimes, you know, I'm a little hard on them a little bit but you know as family as i see them family sometimes you have to be but you also help them out you know if they have a late paper and, and there's the due date say yes take the weekend take a couple days and finish it you know you know family does that but also family you know is is also you know like like tommy said supportive they're the ones that you have to thank you know i didn't do what where i am by myself, I had tons of help, like you said. And when I was cooking at the lodge and started cooking there, uh, there was this guy, Bryce uh, Wildcat. He was a Pawnee. Yeah. I actually went to law school with him in Missoula. Him and my sister, Patty, were just like that. Yeah. And he cooked there for years and I yeah. and he passed away. He was a chief judge, I think, for a while yeah. at Fort Peck Community College and prosecutor and, uh, <laughs> and uh, he uh, you know, passed away there at Fort Peck. And you know what, as a Pawnee, you know, FPCC, the, the, uh, the lodge, the Cinnaboyne Lodge, uh, Fort Peck people there, they took him in. They were his family then when yeah. he passed away. So you're right, Tommy, family can be, yes, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your grandparents, but it also can be an extension, you know, of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Something you spit crazy. on your camera. Did I spit on my camera? Yeah. Oh wow, that's the first time that happened. I I thought maybe some uh, some uh, was like an orb or like, something. Gigi yeah. man was coming in there to say, "Hey, that Joey." Is, there. <laughs> that is getting holy. Yeah. But you know, Joey, in, in that whole process, one time, you know, I know Joey is hard because one time, uh, Colin uh, McKenzie were were little kids then, and 
and they were outside playing. You guys lived out west of town there in that trailer house out there by Sansevers. But uh, we went out there and we were visiting and we were talking, me and Joey and uh, Patty and, and uh, his, his wife were sitting there visiting. Here pretty soon, we heard a big old cry and went outside and here Mackenzie fell and cracked her head. I don't know if you remember that, Joe, mm -hmm. but she had a big old knot right there. And Joe, come out there. You guys get in the house. Get in there. Get in the house. And she said, what, what, what? Get in here. Look at what happened. You guys were playing outside. You're never going outside again. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, remember that with the, uh, I also asked uh, Cole and Mackenzie, did you guys get to go outside <laughs> again? <laughs> but, uh, you know, those are the sorts of things that um, uh, kind of stories we had in growing up because they were family. We were very close. We were very tight. Christmas time, we'd come together and all oh, celebrate yeah. and mm -hmm. really enjoy that aspect of it. And again, as it relates to that religious perspective, and that's the foundation that kept us going. That's why I've never, ever held anything against being religious because it carried me for 27 years eh? mm -hmm. in my whole life, in my decision-making process. And that respect was reciprocated, even though I changed my belief system into a more spiritual perspective. And I think Joe can, Joey, Dr. Joe can relate to that as in regards to even how his children perceive these sorts of things with that open-mindedness and it helped them become more secure and more comfortable at who and what they were, in spite of the fact that Doreen made them half white. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And, and you know, Doreen, and Doreen Long come from a really good family as well. Her, your mother-in-law and, and Bernard and oh, all of you guys. People. Yeah, good farm yeah. family, hardworking. Yeah. I mean, Janice, the mother, I mean, still does in her 80s, cans her garden food, yeah, yeah. you know, unbelievable. I don't know who does that still. She does. Yeah. And I know yeah. there are probably a small, tiny group of people who do who does that. But, uh, you know, that just shows you, you know, how uh, grounded they are in the yeah. place and the farm. And, 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 you know, you don't have to live on a farm. You could still live in, you know, in the city, the town, Wolf Point. You know, and still have those types of uh, experiences where uh, you go out hunting. We, we used to, we grew up, I know you, Elijah and Tom, we grew up, we grew up going out hunting and picking berries and, and gathering turnips. And, and that wasn't just our only food. You know, we had commodities, of course, and we went to Buttery Foods, which is now Albertsons. But, you know, we, we you know, we got to think from everywhere. You know, we. Joe, Joe do you remember that time we were hunting somewhere in your. You're, that somebody they shot a deer anyway i don't know if your mother oh. ever forgave ricky for this because james was the baby eh? he was a little tiny bony guy and they got out there and they, they skinned that deer and that that <laughs> deer skin was all all sticky eh? ricky took that deer i threw it on james and it stuck to him i don't think your mom <laughs> ever forgave really, him. Yeah. oh but right. give james a heart attack traumatized you remember that? him you know that's really, I'm, I'm glad you, you know, kind of bring up that kind of stories because, you know, sometimes, you know, when you look back on your life, you everything, especially our lives as Native people growing up in Indian country, you know, tribal housing and being poor and all of that, <laughs> commodity foods, all that shared experience. Um, even though, you know, we kind of didn't know we were poor and we were trying to make it the best we can and our parents were helping out as much as they could, um, you know, there were some really bad times, you know, yeah, we yeah. had trauma, traumatic experience. And sometimes we didn't even know it. We just, you know, kind of accepted it as life. Look at my father yeah. being an extreme alcoholic, you know, um, there's nothing, nothing, nothing more traumatizing than seeing your mother cr crawling down the hallway after getting beat up by your drunken father, her crying and screaming. Yeah. And you're nine, 10 years old. Yeah. can't do anything about it you're powerless you know yeah that's trauma that is extreme. no one should go through that nobody yeah but people do unfortunately yeah. and that's what alcohol does you know I mean, and we've overcome it problems with drugs and alcohol and stuff i'll be the first yeah. to admit you know i'm not i'm not perfect you know but i you know swore alcohol off and maybe yeah. i'll have a glass of wine or something with dinner but uh you know we have to make those choices individually we can't you know push people you know, into things as individuals, we have yeah. to say enough is enough. Let's stop. Yeah. You know, you know and that, that's that shared be drugs, whether it be domestic abuse, whether it be those problems that we've yeah. that many of us have often experienced growing up. We can't we have to stop that. We have to get back, like you said, Tommy, to our traditional ways, whether it be 
you know, the big lodge, whether it be sweat lodges, whether it be learning our languages over again, whether, yeah. or if we're going to go to the, you know, Christian side, well, they they have good side too. They have good yeah. things to say, you know, yes. sometimes, you know, but, uh, you know, they, they have a good doctrine. Don't hurt anybody. Don't kill anybody. Of course, they have a very, very checkered and dark past when it comes to dealing with us Native Americans. In forms look, look, of, at what, uh, look at what we've done, Joey. Dr. Joe, look what we've done. We, we've intervened in that cycle. Look at your upbringing, what you just mentioned, that domestic abuse and all. We stopped that. Your children have never experienced that. Eh? My kids have never. I, I always talk about uh, my kids. I've never hollered or ever hit any of my children. And people think I'm bragging on myself. What I'm doing is I'm bragging on my kids because they have the disposition to never put me in a position to where I had to be upset like that. Eh? Yeah. And what they became was good conflict resolution people amongst yeah. themselves. Eh? And so, but we intervened in that cycle of dysfunction, Joe. And yeah. we changed that whole, again, uh, Toshka Elijah, that ideological paradigm shift. We talk about that. That's why we started this. Yeah. It was based on that, a, a different way of is, perceiving yeah, yeah, a different way of perceiving who and, we are. You know, are. getting back, you know, I'm not perfect. I spank my kids, but not violently. And no, 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 no. Spank on the <laughs> butt. And I'd yelled at them out of anger, and I wasn't a perfect parent. You know, but they taught me. They taught me yeah. that I was wrong. You know, that, yeah. so that's about being a lifelong student. As a parent, I learned yeah. from my kids. Yeah. Am I perfect now? No, I'm not perfect. I'm far from that. But I'm still learning. I'm still trying. And I yes. want to be. You know, I want to be the best person that I can. Do I fail sometimes? Of course I do. Yeah. You know, everybody does. But we gotta we we need help. And that's what again, that's what I learned so much from my prompt traumatic operation and spine injury, learning how to walk over yeah. again, is that we need help. We have to accept help. I was for a long time like my dad, you know, help everybody, help everybody. And you know what? Don't ask for it. I don't need any help. Dude, I'm a man. I can do no, I don't need no help. You know, I'll do I'll do everything for everybody, but don't help me. I can do it all myself. You can't function like that. There's no, no. way. You'll, no. you'll 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 destroy yourself. You will. Yeah. You know. And so I have learned that to accept help is one of my biggest problems was to accept help from people. You yeah. know, and, and I've learned that and I still am, you know, where yeah. I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, uh my physical therapist, what a great lady, my neurologist, my son, my daughter, Florence Garcia, um, who used to be the president at FPCC at one time. I mean, what a saint. Without her, I, I, I wouldn't have yeah. I, I wouldn't have survived without Florence. No way. Just you like know, your right? mom, eh? This, Just Florence like is, your mom. <laughs> Florence is the reincarnation of my mother. Great yeah. heart, great person, yeah. you know. Yes, yeah. definitely. And that's why, you know, we have people here at FPCC, like Haven reminds the, the president, you yeah. know, you know, uh, President Gorno. I call her yeah. Haven. I think everybody calls her Haven. She's yeah. like the mother. She's just a great person. And you know yeah. what? Things haven't been perfect for her either. You know, we should look at and we know things about, uh, you know, health wise and, and family and stuff. And nobody's is, you know, we all we have to help each other. Haven's helped me. I've tried to help her. You know, yeah. I try and help FPCC as much as I can. You know, I want to be the best instructor as I can. Of course, you know, a couple of times, you know, you get run-ins with students and students get run-ins with you and you have conflict. But as you were talking about, Tommy, conflict resolution, everything can be in result. We're, uh, we are smart people. Yeah. Look at, we are really smart people, especially Native Americans. We've survived genocide. We've survived virgin soil epidemics, smallpox that wiped out 99.9% .9 of all, and, you know, as a, as a race of people, we shouldn't be here in this podcast. Not at yeah. all. If you yeah. look at the odds, you know, yeah. one, that 0.1% people that survived those things, those virgin soil epidemics that wiped out 10 million people. I mean, for us, us three to be here, what luck, what We're luck, the and wolves. not only luck, but also what help we had from our relatives because yeah. you know the people that survived especially during those uh you know those virgin soil epidemics and that's what one of when we'll get to it we're going to get ahead of ourselves we're going to talk about that rocky point story in this uh first voices project that's coming up great story tragic but 
necessary. <laughs> you know, we survived. And you know that I, I think those are the super Indians, the Indians that survived that, the Indians that survived the initial reservation period. You know, at Fort Peck, there were only 1,200, you know, Sioux and about 800, 900 Assiniboine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at the lowest point, the nadir yeah. of their existence, that lowest yeah. point, those 800, those 1,200, those are the super Indians. They survived. Alpha wolves. The yes. Alpha wolves, Joey. Yes, they survived. That's who I really give thanks to every yeah. night in my prayers is them. And you the see, that's Indians. why I believe in genetic memory, Joey. Yeah. Is because oh, again, yeah. we, we carry on those virtues that they developed. And, and so we became like all those people that are here today, Indians that grew up on the reservation, they're all alpha wolves as a result mm -hmm. of what I believe is genetic memory and coming on. And, exactly. And, and we've again, inherited that. We have that. Yeah, you know, we're yeah, not yeah. completely like that, but yeah. we can draw back from, we can draw it from the well, you know, from our yeah. genetic well. Exactly. To help you know, us. everybody, everybody accentuates and, and they don't understand. Historical trauma is carried on generationally. Oh, yeah. That's what it, intergenerational trauma. And but that same thing applies to these virtues that have been developed in, in our characteristics to become survivors in a natural way. Eh? That's the way I look at it. That's and why it's all, I believe and it's all and it's all yeah. interconnected. Just like Elijah was saying uh, last week, you had on uh, Dr. Winchief, and he talked about yeah. critical race theory. Yeah. I mean that is connected as well. You know, we yeah. see that pushback from the conservatives. Oh, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to. Of course, it's you have truth. to hear that. Yeah. You know, this is yeah. what this country, this whole country is based on terror. You know, yeah. to terrorize native populations. <laughs> First of all, with virgin soil epidemics. And secondly, with warfare. And thirdly, with uh, um, uh, confinement to Indian reservations. And fourthly, with starvation. Mm -hmm. And then fifth, to wipe out your whole culture. Yeah. Luckily, they didn't. They and couldn't. This, this, the Buffalo Chasers podcast is actual proof that they haven't won. It's proof yeah. that we have we've won, <laughs> you know, and 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 we have without being thing. radical or militant, without being <laughs> radical or militant, but yeah. just expressing the importance of that history that we represent and doing it in a dignified, honorable way to sustain the integrity of who we are as a people. Hey. Eh? And also, oh, forgive, man, and also forgiveness. Forgiveness is a yes, good thing. Yes. Forgiveness is a good thing. Yeah. You know, I, you know, the old uh, the adoption ceremony of the Sioux, you know that story. The reason that came about was because that adoption ceremony of the Sioux people was there was a warrior who was killed by another warrior over over a over a, a lady, you know, a, a woman. And you know, the parents of that of the warrior that was killed they took it upon themselves to forgive that person who killed their son. And they took that, it's almost making it make me cry here, and, and took that other murderer of their son and adopted him as their own son and forgave him. That's the, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful story, just as beautiful as the Christian story of the people when they sent Jesus, when God sent his own son down here, to die for everybody. I mean, if you believe in that, that's fine. That's a great story. I mean, I wouldn't give my son to die for anybody, you know. All you know, you know, you know Joey, that, that story was shared with me by my grandpa Joe Flying by. Yeah. And he said, every time you meet in a Rickara, you should go shake their hand. I said, sure, yeah. why? And that's where it came from, that Rick Rickle yeah. war party killed that, that chief's son. Mm -hmm. And that chief was going to go kill all the Rickera, but he had a vision in his trek there. And they said, go adopt his son as your son. That's that's what that. And if you ever notice in the Sioux, mm -hmm. when they do uh, the hunka ceremony, they always utilize corn. Yeah, corn is the, part of the Rickera, hunka yeah. to, to recognize the, the food that was good for them. Yeah. And so they acknowledge that relationship, yeah. eh? Yeah. Just there's, to, a, a, there's, a, there's a parallel story where Gandhi in India, you know, uh, was uh, talking to a uh, another Hindu, and, and a, 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 a Muslim Pakistani killed his whole family. His whole family got killed, and he was crying. He was he wanted to kill all the Muslims, yeah. every Muslim. This guy, this this Hindu, and Gandhi says, "No, don't do that." He says, go find a little orphan Muslim child. There's, there's thousands of them out there that have been orphaned. Go find a little Muslim child 
and take that child and raise him as a Muslim, not as a Hindu, but as a Muslim. Yeah. You know, you know, cool. stories like that, you know, are all over the world and history of humanity. Yep. yep. You know, from a spiritual just those perspective, little stories. Yeah. They, 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 they overshadow and they completely, completely trump and get it and just wipe away all the evil and all the mistreatment and all of the bad in the world where we see death and destruction and lying and cheating and, and you know, all of the bad stuff. Yes, yeah. that's there. But you know what? Just a small amount of goodness just wipes out that badness. Just yeah. Yeah. Look at all the people out. You talk about the big lodge at the Cinnabon and the Sioux and everybody else have our lodges. Every tribe, you know, you know, a lot of white people think that, you know, everybody goes to those. The whole tribe shows up. You know, no, we're talking. <laughs> everybody, yeah. we're talking four percent, three percent of all the yeah. population, if that. And the rest of them are living and doing what they're doing. Yeah. That's what keeps us alive. Is those yeah. those are the super Indians again. Yeah. Well, I haven't been to the lodge for a couple of years again because of COVID. And then last year I had my operation. I couldn't walk. So hopefully this year I'll try and come and cook again and we can get things back on track up there. Yeah. You know, and, and you know what? The creator knows that. And then, you know, a lot of people at the lodge, especially that position of cook, Bryce used to do it for many, many years and you picked it up and, and all that. But they don't understand the essentialness of that position as a cook. They think, oh, that's just us. No, it's not. That's probably the catalyst to everything that is because those people are st uh, starving themselves for four days and even the leadership is doing that and so the cook is essential because they need that support they need the singers the people that are supporting them from oh, outside yeah, yeah. they need to eat and, and so who final, does that the cook <laughs> and then the final meal too you know the, yeah yeah, when, they, yeah. when they break their fast and yeah you know, come back to us you know yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, cool. and then and yeah. then in that whole process you know people don't understand that and, and then in that that uh whole protocol of, of everything that's done it's got to be done in a very respectful highly regarded way right. and you even, know even, like, even cooking the uh the shuka wahapi you know yeah that's, yeah yeah that's important you know i tell people yeah. about that and, and people, people don't know just, that white, white people just like cringe and oh my <laughs> god they you know and i kind of like telling that story you know just yeah. i'm telling them about are you, do Indians eat dogs? They always say, I say yeah, we eat dogs. What's wrong with that? You know, nothing wrong. It's medicine, but, but yeah. you have to understand it's puppies and there's a story behind it. And, yeah. you know, it's not just go find a dog on the street and eat it. That's what they think, you know. <laughs> Big hind quarter. Some <laughs> <laughs> big dog. But, you know, the first, the, my first year I cooked up there, you know, kind of was the head cook about 11, 12 years ago. Yeah. Uh, man, that four days on that fourth day, oh, I just, Cra crashed. I just I, I yeah. slept for about a day and a half, two days. I was just yeah. tired. Yeah. My bones were sore. I just oh man, <laughs> I was just like boy, I don't know if I want to do. What am I getting into? Jeez, <laughs> Patty, what are you doing? You know. And then the second year, you know, wasn't so. You, you learn every year. You learn something. You know, when you're coming into things. Of course, I was new to it. You know, and you know what? By about the fourth or fifth year, time four days just went by like that. Oh, I remember man. about three years ago, last time I cooked was. I remember Sunday, it was like, geez, it's over already. I wanted it to go on longer. I wanted, yeah. I didn't want it to stop. Yeah. Um, that bonding that went on, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, even just drinking coffee with some elder. Yeah. Yeah. Having, I don't even smoke and I have a cigarette sometimes, <laughs> you know. But, you know, just, just you know, like you said, uh, Tommy, genuine bonding. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't have that, and that's sad. A lot of people yeah. do not have that. That's why we have, I was just watching the news about those four students that were murdered two weeks ago in Moscow, Idaho. I used to live in Moscow. That's why I was kind of following that. There was yeah. the University of Idaho, four 20 year old students, three girls and a guy were stabbed. Yeah. You know? Who did that? Who did that? Why? That's yeah. just one of, you know, just many instances of, of evil and bad and just, just terrible, terrible things. Who did that? Well, you know, that person has no bonding. That person has no grounding. That person is lost. What the uh, uh, Navajos call skinwalkers, you know, in the Oyate yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. No soul. No, no. 
You know, and the beauty of it is, is it's a, we can live in both worlds, as I think Dr. Joe is representative of uh, uh, establishing himself in, in a non-Indian world, uh, keeping up with the Joneses, if you would, but uh, as a common man, as, as that's a, the term we use as like what we're trying to explain to everybody is ekchewi uh, chashapi. And, and that means like we're just common people, eh? Indians per se. And the term Dakota, Lakota, Nakona is, is in re reference to how we look at ourselves. We're your allies. We're your friends. We'll, look, we'll help you out in times of need. And that's all representative of our philosophical belief in respects to who and what we are as a, a, a human beings, preparing ourselves to someday soon go be with our relatives on the other side because we maintain that connection with our spiritual world. And so all of these different ways of humbling ourselves and helping ourselves to understand what it means to be a Kjewi Chashapi, that's totally inclusive of all God's creation, eh? And that Changleshka, that circle of life. And, and I think there's no better representation of that than uh, understanding the importance of, you know, staying in a fast paced world like this, but at the same time, being able to transition and maintain a more uh, way back in the day attitude and, and just calming down and, and not getting stressed or anything, but uh, attending a ceremony, attending a, a gathering, attending something like that where you can just forget about everything and just let it all go and relax and, and, and identify with who and what you are, a human being, not an Indian, a human yeah. being, you know, a two-legged. So, Joey, I think you're representative of that in, that, in, in a very common way to uh, live in the billings and, and keep up with the Joneses in spite of your, your, your uh, operation and whatnot. You're still there through IT perspective. And, but the key is that you have products of this environment, Cold Gravy, Florence, yourself, all educated, but you're still, your, 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 your roots come from the Fort Peck Indian Reservation. And, and that's how important it is to not, not try to prove anything, but just be somebody, a, a exactly. good human being. Thank you, Joey. Yeah, thank you, Tommy. Yeah. I appreciate those words, yeah. There's um, one thing, I, uh, oh, go, go for it. Go, 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 go. Uh, I was just going to say before I, I, I forget was the, the very first class I took at Fort Peck Community College, Joe probably don't even remember it, but I was uh, the shy kid in the back, but he was very, uh, uh, his lectures are, to this day, I, I've been through in a doc program, I've been different schools, university systems. He's by far the best lecturer I have ever heard. He's very like charismatic with his Thank stories. You. And so when I was listening to him talk, I'm like, you brought me back to that class, man. So that, that was awesome. But um, I don't know if it, I don't want to speak out of turn, but before we, we hopped on this podcast and uh, the past, I don't know, two, three weeks, there's been a series of little discussions about a project that might be coming forward. Is it appropriate to talk about that? Yes, I, yes, I, yes. I, yes. Uh, Elijah, you bet. Thanks for that uh, segue into uh you know, this project that we're bringing up to uh, Fort Peck, uh, it's called the First Voices Project. It works with uh, uh, different tribes and reservations and communities to take traditional stories and put them in a digital format on film. Uh, for example, uh, in, in, we did one at uh, Lame Deer at the Cheyennes and uh, Northern Cheyennes, a traditional story of the great race. And that's a traditional story of uh, that that has a bunch of animals and uh, you know buffalo and, and it tells uh, all the uh, values and uh, you know the uh, it gives you a, an outline a blueprint of how to live and and also of your history of where you came from and a lot of traditional stories are like that many of them are and if the they, buffalo would have won we wouldn't be here today <laughs> yep, exa yeah exactly that's true you bet. And so this first voices story is taking it to Fort Peck, and we've already had a couple of meetings with uh, with some people up there, Tommy and uh, uh, Roxanne Bighorn and the Chante Project, uh, uh, Nakoa and uh, um, what's his name, Mr. Uh, Smoker, uh, Kenny Smoker Jr., um, and, and some other groups, some of the high schools where we're going to bring, you know, uh, students from the high from the high schools and uh, from the community college, so that they can put together a digital a film of uh, their traditional story for, for the Sioux, because Fort Peck has a number of different tribal groups there. For the Sioux, it's gonna be the popular and the well-known buff white buffalo calf woman story, which is a beautiful story. And again, tells you all the values, gives you the 
you know, the, the, the seven uh, uh, things of, of way to live, uh, you know, the, 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 the pipe, the chinupa, um, you know, great story, uh, great values, uh, the uh, teaching great values, the, 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 Su the Assiniboine story is going to be the story of Rocky Point, which is the small, the last smallpox epidemic, virgin soil epidemic that came in. Uh, it's a tragic story, but, you know, I think it's a necessary story that a lot of people don't understand, you know, why we're still here and why we almost weren't here at one time because of that. And then the uh, third story is the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa story of how, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, which I'm part of, a lot of Chippewa came here uh, because of Turtle Mountain uh, being such a small reservation that they didn't have enough people, didn't have enough land. And so many of them came over to Fort Peck and settled and intermarried. And you can yeah. see names, Anishinaabe names, you know, the, uh, um, the French names, uh, uh, you know, like Azure, you know, Grand Champ, uh, and you can see those names. And those are, you know, people who've come in, and intermarried, uh, uh, you, you know, generations ago. And even though many of them still today are not, don't have the political and economic power on those reservations, kind of outcasts among outcasts, if you will, uh, they're still there. There's still, a, you know, a population that, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, still live, uh, you know, on Fort Peck and in and around the High Line. You go to Malta, the Demerys, uh, you know, you go to Haver, you see all types of, of Anishinaabe groups there. Some of them not even knowing they're Indian. It's a good story, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell the name, but it's a Wolf Point family, Anishinaabe. Um, old Wolf Point High School, they used to have the, uh, the, the announcements, would all the Indians come to the auditorium? So all us Indians have to go. <laughs> <laughs> and there was two brothers and a sister. They were they had they all had study hall together. The two brothers knew they were Indian. They got up and left. The girl, she didn't know she was Indian. She looked around. She said, "Why are my brothers?" She kind of started freaking out. They're leaving with the Indians. So you know, she she was confused. Still in high school, this high school girl, and um, she got home that night and told her mom. And mom. So and so went with the Indians. Oh my God! So she had to be told she was part Indian at that time. You know, <laughs> crazy. So good one. Thanks a lot. Yeah, a lot of stories out. So this uh, first voices is going to take those stories and have the students interpret them. Work with elders. You know, work with uh, uh, people like uh, JoJo Miller, uh, uh, Lois Red Elf. You know, people those great elders we have there, and and get those stories and and, and put them on film and do their interpretation through art, through dance, through song, uh, through poetry, and come up with a final product. Uh, uh, if you want to look at uh, First Voices uh, Thresh, you can Google that, and uh, uh, you can uh, find what uh, the film that the students did at the Northern Cheyenne Reservation, about a 15, 20 minute film uh, we're looking at, and uh, uh, we're raising money for that right now. Um, I just got done with a grant for the Seventh Generation Fund. For fifty thousand, I think we got a good chance in getting that. Uh, we got some private donors. FPCC is helping us out as well. Uh, the high schools are going to help. So um, yes, I think it's going to be a good project. It's going to be a you know a keystone project, a signature project that will uh, um, uh, not only um, be something that uh, we can be proud of at Fort Peck and, and around uh, Montana and the nation, but also that we could people could use it as a learning tool. OPI is already yep. behind it. My friend Mike Jetty is going to use them in their uh, Indian Ed for All uh, curriculum. So uh, people can use them as teaching tools. You know, Joey, and uh, uh, Elijah and myself had an opportunity, just for those that would be listening to this, is that we did receive the blessings uh, from uh, Orville, uh, yes. Looking Horse, when because yeah. we had I got to have breakfast with them and stuff. And, and of course, I did offer him tobacco and I asked him about it. And, he, and what he shared with us, he said, no, we need to continue to do stuff like this for our young people to understand it's important to them. So we really want to get them involved in that. So yes, go Tommy, and do that, that would be so yeah. great to have a 15, 20 second clip of him right at the beginning. Yeah, we, we can do maybe, it. Maybe, maybe yeah. we can do that. Okay. Yeah. I know because, our, you, know, our, our, you know, people have these fancy cameras or yeah. phones now. My phone's old cabs terrible phone really bad but you know you guys probably got really good phones where it takes really good videos and pictures you know so no i i'm sure he'd be open to that okay and, good and yeah we'll, we'll put yeah. that on there so and, just uh, remind us and we'll, i'll get a hold of him we can do that but 
yeah, Elijah and myself, we visited with them and oh man, it was just a beautiful breakfast we had with them. A lot of, and, and he was so busy. Eh? Let everybody wants to oh, talk to him, sure. but we had him for, with us just for that period of time. I just, uh, uh, really good, good visit. You don't get to visit with him much, but uh, thank you uh, so yeah, much for did. doing that, Tommy. That that, that yeah, is just like the first step. Yeah. That's the first step for this great project to go, go forward. And we got, like I said, we got a lot of help from you guys at Fort Peck Community College. Us um, and uh, Preeti, the lady, uh, she's she's from India, but she's been living in the United States where she lives in New York City. Um, she's uh, has this company called Thresh Dance, which is a drama um, theater group that uh, uses dance and song and movement to tell stories out of New York City, big high powered, you know, uh, theater person and yeah. to bring this to Fort Peck. And this is also, you know, I think an opportunity for those students who are not the star basketball player, who are not the, the first cross country place runner, who are not the cheerleader, you know, who are maybe the singer, maybe the dancer, maybe yeah. the poet who has that artistic ability to come out and to and to to uh, have their interpretation be included in this project, and that's what we want. So. Remember Billy yeah. Yellerob? He had to leave here because yeah. nobody re could relate to him. Nobody could. And, yeah, and, great playwright. Yeah. One of the greatest playwrights yeah. around. My age, yeah. I, Billy and I grew up together on the South Side. Yeah. 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 The only people that could relate to him yeah. were all these white people back east. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really crazy. But you know we can bridge that. We can bring this together. The digital, the Billy didn't have this digital world. No, no, no. But imagine it, if he had this digital world. Oh, man. it's just way different. So yeah. this is a godsend. Elijah, what you have yeah. here with this with this podcast, Buffalo Chasers. I mean, you can't even quantify the effect yeah. that this is having. The positive effect it's that it's having. Yeah. yeah. So I think we've had a, this vision here for about a couple of years now it started off as a basically a response to like covid right we want to reach our students mental health all this good stuff and then we you know visiting different uh people we realized you know the greatest source of inspiration and strength are the, the, the tribal members the community members of fort peck and so we're trying to find you guys out there that are doing movers and shakers that have a story to tell mm -hmm. and so like with dr mcgeeshik you really enrich this whole experience so we definitely want to welcome you back we'll have some further discussions because yeah. the audience got to hear this sneak peek of first people's uh project that'll be coming down the road i would imagine the next year or two yeah. be some good Maybe stuff we coming out a, we could bring preeti in on a zoom uh one sure. of the times and, and we could have yeah. those yeah. on your podcast let's do that yeah. she'd be, sure. more than happy. be more than yeah. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and get yeah. Uh, some of the players like uh tommy and and uh um uh, roxanne uh, bighorn and uh yeah um, uh, Preeti and a couple of other people there, maybe Scott Smoker or someone like Nicola, and yourself, Elijah, who can help out. Whatever you do, don't bring Craig Smith around because all he does is eat our food. I mean, he's like a human lunchbox. All right? He looks for free meals. That's all he looks. He doesn't even do any work. He just looks online. Where is the free meal today? So that's yeah. Mr. Lunchbox. That's who he is. <laughs> Always bringing a watecha too. Yeah. Watecha, you know. Wonderful, I touch it. So we're at the top of the hour. We got a few more minutes. Is there any other like parting comments or anything we might have missed out on? Uh, what, what do you guys think? I just you want know, to say, I just yeah, I just want to jump in there real quick. And and you know, this wouldn't have been started if it wasn't for yeah. And again, Joe, Debbie was a part of it. Debbie, his horse is thunder. You know, it, she was a part of this and, and supported us for the sake of mental health. And I think it was with. Um, American Indian College Fund. She was uh, representing that and got involved. W what was uh, her position at that time, Elijah? Uh, at the time, she was doing a, a contract with American College Fund uh, as the uh, program director for, I forget the name of the grant, but it had to do with um, funding to uh, response for uh, cultural health. aid for mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's amazing. Pandemic. She's a part of that that big lodge too, Joy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a, her and her, Ron, her and Ron. Yeah, her, all her and Ronnie, they, they were always supportive of that. And and again, it's amazing how we all come together, eh? And, yeah. and to, that common mindset is important. Yeah. That ideological paradigm shift that needs to occur for the sake of understanding that diversity and that uniqueness uh, based on uh, natural law 
should become an enhancement and enrichment for the sake of the growth of our children. Hey, eh? you see how yeah, that works? Exactly. And that That's diversity is all these people coming together, but the uniqueness is based on we still speak our own language, we still conduct our own ceremony, we still do. That's that uniqueness that needs to be represented as well. And that's an enrichment enhancement for the sake of the growth of our children. That's our future. And again, Joey, Dr. Joe, you, you mentioned 4% is all it is. But we can make that grow. We can make it become a little bit more. And I think that's what we're doing here as it relates to that. So there's a lot of people involved in these podcasts. And I just wanted to mention Debbie's name too, because I know she's yeah. a part of that a big part of that and understanding this whole process and concept of this IT perspective and getting in, involved in that whole virtual experience and communicating with one another. So good job. You bet. Right on. Well, I That's would just like to, thoughts. yeah, I, my last words, I just want to say thank you, Elijah. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, FPCC, Haven, all of the people there. Yeah. Just been great, great to me. I, you know, I, I, I don't know what I'd be doing if, without FPCC. I know I've worked there before and I've worked at other colleges and universities, but this uh, online teaching, uh, I, I, I get to work from home. It seems like I, I actually connect, you know, uh, I, I don't know, better with my students, it seemed like, because, you know, face-to-face, -face, there's some students you won't even see. Now you have to communicate online. Every student you have to be involved with, no matter what. Not just with a test, not just with a paper, but... You have to communicate. They were, you know, places when I used to teach in Bozeman, I had two, 300 students. I mean, you know, 80% of the student, 90% of the students I never talked to ever, ever, not yeah. once, just test or just correct their test or correct their paper. And that's it. You know? yeah. So this stuff is great. Elijah, I really commend you. I mean, you are, this is something, again, you can't quantify the success of how this is going to be. It's beyond quantification. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, and for anybody that's listening, I always just want to redirect them. We, we tried to, our best to archive every single one of these episodes. I guess you'd call them. I believe there's 80 plus going back a couple of years ago. So go to uh, the Fort Peck Community College channel um, on YouTube. And if you go under the, the playlist Buffalo Chasers, they're all there. So I encourage you guys to check that out. And uh, so with that, uh, thank both of you gentlemen for uh, joining us today. I'll pay to watch the Yuhapo. Okay. Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh.